Hey guys, here I come again with another English video. Cause I just saw this news that US government puts sanctions on 14 Chinese officials. <laughs> but in fact, the list includes well-known and most importantly, highly respected experts, professors, researchers, scientists, and scholars. I'll just name one in this video, right? Mr. Ding Zhongli. He is the academician of Chinese Academy of Science. He's been devoting himself to stratigraphic geology for over 50 years. And he's also been continuously monitoring the environmental protection process and outcome contributed by Chinese people and governmental policies. Can you imagine that such a pure scientist is right now in a sanction list? What did he do? Possibly just him with other Chinese scientists revealed the fact that so-called developed country or international organizations is 1 million percent fake democratic value charged absolutely bullshit the one fool you guys with and shackle us developing countries with i will never talk only on behalf of china simply because i'm chinese neither i will be debunking this bullshit only from perspective of developing countries let's just be real right now the mainstream media opinion especially in developed countries shifting their focus of so-called exposing how Trump administration failed in pandemic in a subtle air, making you believe that China, again China, should be responsible for all kinds of global issues, this time global warming and air pollution and environmental protection, three in one Christmas package. I'm not so sure what you guys would feel if I show you the actual data of the CO2 or warming gas emission deduction plan offered by various countries and global organizations plan they offer to the world how much gas emission you can have as a country. But possibly I would expect expression of angry, absurd, and I learned this from LC Prime Minister Morrison after he claimed to feel while a kind Chinese illustrator made this image of a LC special force putting a knife at the throat of Afghanistan kid that according to the LC National Defense Force is not even close to what they did in Afghanistan. The word repugnant. Okay, you might not read Chinese here. I'll translate for you. These are seven packages offered by different organizations or scholars. The first one is IPCC. It's an organization under UN. And G8 is kind of an industrialization in lead country coalition, starting from the US, Canada, UK, Deutschland, French, Italy, Japan, and Russia. UNDP obviously is from UN, and OECD is an international organization of 37 market economic led countries and based in France, Paris. The later three one is from Australian, one is from the US, and one is from the Denmark. The red number is the factor if you divide the first raw number with the second. For example, under the IPCC case, smallest gas emission package offered to more developed countries, in that case, numerical outcome is 63. On second roll, we notice two things. First, the biggest package offered to not that developed countries, numerical outcome is 33, which factor is 2, right? And if we pay attention to how close the range is for underdeveloped countries, 29 to 33. That's 4. Comparing to for more developed countries, 63 to 80, that's 17. It's common sense that more developed countries has less population. So it's very obvious observation that this one is by no means based on per capita perspective. In other words, if I may quote here Animal Farm from George Orwell, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. In this video, I might drive you crazy by bringing up fact, wrestling with this quote again and again, okay? And under G8's case, it's industrialization leading country scene, it's 3.38. UNDP, 2. It's also surprising to notice how the two organizations under United Nations are the same. OECD, 4.3. ALSEAS, 2.1. US, 6. But the champion is Denmark. While US at 178 and India at 16, with a shocking factor of 11. Mr. Ding Zhongli is the first author on this journal that you possibly realize why he's on a sanction list, right? And right now you might wonder if you're a so-called environmental protection activist or you're from a developed country. 
Why this developing country people keep saying they should have less burden on environmental protection? Very simple. Because you guys have been polluting freely for almost a century without any kind of regulation or agreement or enforcing on you, and even with developing countries keep polluting without any restriction, we would not even catch up the damage you guys already did to our planet. That I offered here is from the World Bank. You can freely get to this website whenever you want. Okay, so we're gonna start this interactive map from 1960. While well, US obviously polluted most is at 16, and Canada 10, Mexico 1.6, Greenland, even Greenland. Well, I think like, where is Greenland? There's air pollution. While well, China is at 1.1, India 0.2. Australia, 8.5, and Russian Federation. At that time, it is still USSR, right? 12. We move into 2000. China finally joined WTO. At that time, US at 20, and Canada at 17. China, 2.6. Brazil, 1.8. Argentina, 3.8. Australia, 17. And Russian Federation, 10. Moving to the latest, United States, 15. Canada, 15. Brazil, 2.2. And China, 7.1. Australia got even more than United States at 15.5. I think it's fairly reasonable for me to say at least Prime Minister Ms. Morrison should feel ashamed. Australia, obviously as a developed country, is still increasing the damage to our ecosystem and polluting the world. So, very obviously and objectively saying, Developed countries that benefited from not only industrialization but also global trade should recognize their long neglected social welfare is based on the fact polluting our planet without any restriction or law enforcement for decades. Not even mentioning how much exploitation developed countries have been putting on developing countries for centuries and is still on Chile, South Africa, while the mercantilism is camouflaged with so-called free trade or free market so a gentleman, possibly a lady, can sit in a developed countries, hopefully magnificent cafeteria decorated with numerous resplendent germs, folk art, take their time, have a cup of coffee that is offered by out of nowhere child labor filled with tear, blood and hopelessness. What they're doing? Possibly, they're typing on their fancy latest Apple laptops, obviously made in China, on political framing or faking of some narratives so developing countries can pollute less to their precious planet. If you are from undeveloped countries, possibly you're thinking right now that, ah, this guy is fucking exaggerating. No, I'm not. Indian farmers are protesting against their government regarding agriculture laws on pricing and so-called democratic countries that have been putting a magnifier on India. Oh, you have been failing again. You're polluting too much. You must stop. Do you know, or in other words, do you care how much Indian farmer get? For example, ginger price per kilogram, two Australian dollars, one kilogram of ginger. Take your time, be creative. What price the Aussies would label these roots? when they ultimately come through the customs. Fucking $52 per kilo. Who gets the money? The farmers? Never. Indian middlemen and Aussies. And of course, this middleman will finally save up enough money to be a proud immigrant, get a nationality of, I don't know, Aussies or US, whatever, I don't care. But what about the farmers? Who cares about them? And this middleman, I don't know, he himself or his son, his grandchildren, will finally join the Grand Parade or War on Pollution against those developing countries. It's not even about ginger, air pollution, or environmental protection. It's about life and death. We all know vaccination right now, okay? Canada, in advance, offered nine different kinds of vaccines for its citizens. At the same time, only AstraZeneca had promised to offer vaccines to developing countries that join COVAX at lowest price with certain amount of vaccine. Other companies possibly will just have to wait till odd people in developed countries taking their vaccination and they have extra ones for you guys to take. 
You know how many vaccines if you're from a developed countries? Your government has been squeezing out the possibility someone living in a developed countries can survive while you possibly will just get some mild symptom. And not mentioning how Bill Gates already suggests that uh, if you don't prioritize people living in developing countries, especially those with very bad hygiene conditions, very likely the virus will mutate on them and come back to you if that happens. Whatever kinds of vaccine you took already, doesn't matter anymore. Let's compare with China right here. Chinese government promised it will share the techniques and manufacturing procedure offering purchase if countries, especially developing countries, could not afford any kind of researching, manufacturing, or extra price. I will not make any comment on that since I'm Chinese, but fairness and justice is inherited in human heart. And last, if you're from a developing country, obviously you got freedom to do nothing, say nothing, just sit there and watch how this absurd political attacks, shameless sanctions on honorable scientists, and hypocritic, we love this planet, but in reality, buck passing on the responsibility to take action to stop polluting this planet. All animals are equal, but some are, if you do nothing, will be more equal than others, possibly forever, who knows.